Hello, I'm Sarah McLaughlin, naturopath, and I love transport, transporting, transforming perimenopausal women from exhausted, cranky and anxious to feeling calm and energetic um, and patient by teaching them to understand their body and how to stress proof it. Uh, and I do that with practical, easy to follow advice about food, movement, herbal and nutritional medicine. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. Practical, easy to follow advice on how to boost your immune system and use foods that you probably already have in your cupboard at home. So looking after yourself shouldn't have to be hard. Um, it should be easy, especially when you're sick and you don't really feel like it. You really want it to be easy. So don't forget, if you know someone that might benefit from this information or other information on my um, social media pages and website, please feel free to share, the, share it with them, tag them in the video so that they can take advantage of my um, information and knowledge and those practical, easy to follow tips that I'm sharing with you tonight. Um, so I'm assuming that you can hear me if you're watching now if you can give me a like or a comment that lets me know that I am coming through loud and clear otherwise let's get going so first up like what is your immune system because we kind of talk about it a lot it's a bit like gut health and all those things that I talk about but what actually are they so your immune system is a part of your body. Uh, it mostly works um, in your fluids and your, uh, like your blood and your lymph um, and your saliva and digestive enzymes, all those things in your gut um, has part of your immune system in it. So think of them, um, they're mostly cells. There's two parts to your immune system. We've got those first responders. So you're like your, they're kind of like your soldiers um, and they're your innate immunity. So they just kind of respond without thinking. <laughs> and then we have the long-term, like our memory um, component. That's called our adaptive immunity. So that's like a learned, um, uh, like when Siri is learning to understand you, that's kind of what your adaptive immunity is. It sees the stuff coming into your body and it learns about what is meant to be in there and what it should not attack and what it should attack. And that's, that's part of our immune system is what can go haywire and wonky when people have autoimmune conditions. So it's where their immune cells are attacking our own tissues of our body. So a common one is in the thyroid um, uh, or in the joints for rheumatoid arthritis. That's another common one I see in clinic as well. So what I'm talking about today, though, is that mostly that innate immunity, although some of your adaptive immunity comes into it too. And... Um, but I'm going to give, give you a little intro into immune system 101. So I'm really simplifying it. Our immune system, like the rest of our body, is incredibly complex. So please don't let my simplistic explanation um, deceive you in, into thinking that it's just a really simple um, part of our body. It's a very effective part of our body when we support it. Um, so... When you have a cold or flu, you want your first responders on board. They're the ones that get on with the job on knocking that virus or those bacteria and stop them from growing in numbers and taking over the joint. So you, so they stop them from taking over your body. But you also want those cells with a memory or an antibody of the virus um, in case you get infected again because they're what stop you getting sick or getting as sick like the second time when you might get exposed to something. Sometimes you don't even get sick at all. Think about all the times now if you've got kids when they got gastro and you actually haven't ended up getting sick. That's because of part of your immune system. So good job, it's worked well. Um, so you have something that's really cool about our immune system too is your skin, your mucous membrane. So like in, in your mouth all the way through to your anus um, is lined with that mucous membrane uh, in your lungs, in your bladder. And all the chemicals that they produce. So in your mouth, you produce saliva. In further in your intestines, you produce stomach acid and other digestive enzymes. They're all part of your immune system, even your tears. So I think that's really cool too. All of those secretions, all of those barriers that we have to keep things out, they're like a really basic or rudimentary part of our immune system. So talking about our innate immunity or the immune cells that make up your immune system, they're called the white blood cells. So if you've had a blood test, you might see they're written on there, the different types of white blood cells that are in your body. So I'm going to give you a whiz through. So next time when you look at them, you can think, oh, right, I know what that's talking about now. 
So they are your personal army. They are there at your command. Well, most of the time they do their own thing anyway. They do what they are programmed to do, which is what you want them to do. And their sole purpose is to keep you alive and well. So isn't that cool? So next time if you're feeling down or you're thinking that mm, nobody loves me, no one's paying, I haven't you know, got anyone to talk to or whatever, think about all those cells in your body. Their sole focus is you and keeping you alive. It's really cool. So they thrive when you're feeling healthy, when you're healthy, when you're fit. They love um, whole foods. I mean, what part of our body doesn't? I say it every week, don't I? Eat your veg, eat your whole foods. But sugar makes them sluggish. And next week I will be talking more about what suppresses your immune system and what keeps it down. So you look after your cells and they will look after you. First up, you've got the neutrophils. They, um, we can have up to 5,000 of them in one drop of blood. Like that is amazing. And they are the real workhorses of the immune system. Um, and they're the first on site. If there's injury or infection, they are there um, nibbling away and eating all the stuff that we don't want and getting rid of the waste from the area. Lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are like your assassins in your immune system. <laughs> Some of them produce these antibody molecules that I talked about before, and they recognize and remove viruses and bacteria from the bloodstream um, before they can really take a hold. There's different types of lymphocytes. You've got your B cells, your T cells, and your natural killer cells. And is that not the coolest name for some cells in our body? Um, so they do the job of getting rid of bacteria and viruses and other invading pathogens before they can take hold. I don't know who got to name them, but that is pretty cool that they gave them that name. So we've got monocytes and macrophages. They're the same type of cell. One just turns into the other. Isn't that cool as well? So monocytes cruise around in your bloodstream. Oh, hang on. They get somewhere that they're needed and then they turn into a macrophage. So cool. Um, and that's when mostly when they go to the lungs or the liver and they digest bacteria and viruses um, and other cellular waste. And they also release histamine as well. So they're also on the scene if you've got itches, rashes, redness, that kind of thing. You know your macrophages have turned up to the party. So ozonophils um, are ones that if you've ever had a blood test, they're usually in really, really low numbers, like 0.1 or less. Or sometimes they just show up as zero. Um, so they will only usually increase in your circulation if you've got allergies or parasites. So like food intolerances actually counts as the ozonophils as well. It can help increase those too. So then you've got your basophils and your mast cells. They um, are your part of your inflammatory response. So they also release histamine um, and they are um, particularly around in allergic responses. So if you've got hay fever or an actual um, allergy to something, having an allergic response, you know, your basophils and your mast cells are there and they're spraying out the histamine so that you have that swelling, that redness, that heat. Um, they and they move into the tissues as well and kind of stay in there and releasing their histamine. So that's your immune cells, immune cell 101. You know you've got your, um, your soldiers on the scene and you've got a memory part of your immune system as well. And really that's all you need to know um, that as long as they're doing their job and nothing untoward is happening, most people would never have to know any different or any more information about them. So nutrients, nutrients that the immune system loves, vitamin C. I mean, it'd probably be hard pressed to find anyone that didn't know that. Um, but there's other what we call bioflavonoids that help support and refresh the action of vitamin C in your body so it can keep going for longer um, with its antioxidant and, and anti-inflammatory action. And vitamin C is actually also a natural antihistamine as well, so it can really help settle that inflammatory response. The other bioflavonoids that you might see if you've got a vitamin C supplement and you turn it over, you might see it has um, quercetin and rutin or hesperidin in it. So there are like other bioflavonoids that support vitamin C. Vitamin A and beta carotene. Vitamin A is actually one of the really underrated um, immune um, nutrients it's really important to get um, in your diet and um, animal foods are usually the easiest way to get uh, vitamin a beta carotene is like a precursor to vitamin a but it can be really hard for some people's bodies to switch that into vitamin a so if you can consume some actual vitamin a rich foods then it's a lot easier for your body 
especially when it's sick like when your body's sick it needs a bit of nurturing and nourishment you feel tired because your body and your immune system is doing a lot you want to ease that burden um, on on your digestive system uh, during that time so other nutrients needed by the immune system, vitamin D, um, really a bit hard to get right now, especially in Melbourne, because the sun um, particularly isn't on the right angle to activate um, the compounds in your skin that then get turned into vitamin D via your liver and your kidney. So supplementing is a good idea, especially um, if you are sick uh, already, some vitamin D is a good thing to do. Vitamin E, your immune system needs lots of that when it's busy fighting something. Um, and minerals like zinc and iron and selenium. So um, zinc is important from top to toe, um, but really used a lot by the immune system as well. And same with selenium, because they're used to make lots of antioxidant compounds that your liver and your body makes. So you also need plenty of the other building blocks that your immune system uh, or your whole body uses, but your immune system does as well. So that's protein, your healthy fats, and the, and the range of B vitamins or the B complex vitamins as well. So the easiest way to get that <laughs> is a whole foods diet. Like it's, I say it all the time, and I'll probably keep saying it every week of the life. There really is not much that a whole foods varied and seasonal diet can't meet for us. However, there's some foods that are immune stimulating or immune modulating. They help, really help support your immune system to do its job um, and to get on top of it and any viruses going around. Um, and the reason that they often are immune stimulating is because they contain lots of those nutrients that I just talked about. Lots of antioxidants and lots of other plant chemicals that, are, that help support our immune system and, and help it make the cells that it needs to function and fight any of those invading pathogens. So yesterday I shared a graphic on social media and it had eight different things on it that are really important for your immune system. Um, I'm going to go through them in a little bit more detail plus some others as well. So water. Water is, is alongside that whole foods diet that I'm always talking about. I'm always telling people have a drink of water, including my kids. If there's anything wrong, have a drink of water. <laughs> but keeping your fluids up is really important, especially when you're sick, um, because it can help uh, your water help is used by your body to help remove waste um, from the body through your lymphatic system and then to your liver and kidneys and, and out of the body. So if you don't have enough of that of water, you're not going to be able to move that waste out of your body. And that's sitting, particularly in your lymph glands, um, where if it's bacterial or virus matter, it can replicate. And, you know, you get your swollen lymph glands, you've got lots of cellular waste in there. Um, water is also useful for transporting minerals in and out of the cells. So we really want plenty of that there because we want the cells to be able to have what they need to fight a virus and fight, fight off the bacteria. And the other thing as well, if you don't have enough water, if we're not drinking enough water and we're dehydrated, you lose blood volume. And that makes it harder for your body to get oxygen to all the cells of your body. So you end up feeling more tired uh, and more lethargic than what you would have already felt when you were sick. So you want to keep your fluids up and particularly warm, like it doesn't have to be hot, like hot cups of tea or whatever, but warm water rather than cold water is better, especially if you have a cold or virus. It's just easier on your body. It has to do less to warm it up to your body temperature. Um, so you can just take that, um, just ease the burden or ease the load for your body by drinking your fluids at room temperature or warm. So following on that theme of water, soups and broths. Um, soups and broths help with your fluid intake. They, um, but you know, with that theme, I should add stews and casseroles to that as well. Um, slow cooked, easy to digest, warm foods, you know, use herbs and spices, use chili even to help really warm them and get your body warmed up and going along. When you're having soups and broths made with, um, you know, protein rich or animal based, say bone broth is very popular at the moment. And there really is a good reason for that because um, it does wonderful things in our body. They are protein rich then, so they're a good source of protein, vitamin A, zinc. They help keep you hydrated. The warm fluids help clear the congestion because they're, you know, steaming up through your nose. Um, and like I said before, there are bone broths are really popular at the moment. If you don't want to make your own, you don't really have to. There's plenty of um, available in the shops. Um, I have some in my online shop 
the broth paste as well but it's important to look like I was looking at one the other day in the shop a pre-made like liquid one and it had really gross ingredients in it like that's not gonna that's not wholesome it's not gonna help you um, feel better and, and get better more quickly it's actually detracting um, from your health so you want to look for one that's you know made with bones or made with meat vegetables herb spices it'll have a bit of salt and water in it as well um, so there's really no need for the weird stuff. Worst comes to worst, I've got on my blog um, the recipe for my whole chicken and vegetable soup. It's perfect for when you're sick. Makes a giant batch. Eat it all week for lunch and dinner if you want, if you can't be bothered cooking anything else. And actually that's what we're having tonight for dinner <laughs> because I've been a little unwell and I've been really craving it. And also it's so easy you just literally chuck everything in the pot and come back later. Uh, and that's really what you want when you're sick. So herbal teas, um, herbal teas like yarrow, elderflower, um, and peppermint is a traditional blend. I've got a twist a version of my of that on my website on my shop. Um, yarrow, elderflower, echinacea, and peppermint. So yarrow and peppermint are very good at boosting a fever if you need your fever boosted or helping your body bring it down if it's too high. The elderflower has a real affinity for the upper respiratory system, so clearing that congestion, um, you know, runny eyes, itchy eyes, um, it helps soothe all of those things for you as well. And the echinacea, echinacea is really good at helping to boost your white blood cell activity. You do tend to have to drink echinacea for a couple of weeks for that to happen, but also it will work on the short term as well to help your lymphatic system, which is part of your immune system as well, which moves waste out of the body, and it will help boost your immune system in other ways as well. I mean, really, you can't go wrong with herbal teas. Even if you slice a bit of ginger and chuck it in a cup with a squeeze of lemon, a little tiny bit of honey, uh, and some warm water. What a soothing drink for you. It'll soothe your throat um, and it'll help clear your congestion. It's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. There's vitamin C from the citrus in there. Like it's magical. It doesn't have to be complicated or hard. That's really what I love about naturopathic care and herbal medicine particularly is it doesn't have to be complicated. It can just be what you've got in the cupboard or what you've got um, in the fruit bowl already. So speaking of veggies and fruit and spices, um, you want to go for colour. So there's a wide variety of nutrients in them. Um, particular veggies and fruit of note are the brassicas or the cruciferous vegetables. So think broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy, pak choy, cabbage, kale, um, Brussels sprouts, they're in season now. Radish too, um, they're all in the brassica family. They have a lot of sulfur compounds as well as that they are very colourful. So they'll have lots of coloured compounds that your body will like. Kiwi fruit, blueberries, citrus fruits, rich in vitamin C, brightly coloured compounds in there too um, that your immune system and your gut loves. Um, avocado, leafy greens, Onions and leeks also contain um, sulfur, but contain um, uh, beta carotene, vitamin C, and that antioxidant compound quercetin that I was talking about. So quercetin is really good if you've got that itchy throat or you've got runny nose, runny nose, <laughs> runny nose, runny eyes. Um, you want those quercetin rich foods there as well. So onions are particularly good. Apples, green tea, they're all rich in quercetin. So you want to get those on your plate. Um, and buckwheat, buckwheat too is actually really um, rich in quercetin. So the onions, garlic, brassicas, they contain sulfur, which helps support your liver function. It, and you want your liver ticking along nicely because your liver is the boss at making um, antioxidants for your body. So um, it will help protect your cells from the... Um, from the from the any damage that waste products from the bacteria and virus from the pathogens but also from your own metabolism that's going on all the time so you want to your liver um, going nicely and uh, to help support your immune system and your immune health as well so that's where the brassicas come in as well onions and the garlic have their own antimicrobial action um, and I'll talk a bit more about garlic in a second uh, I wanted to mention mushrooms. Mushrooms are like the fad superfood of the moment, but like they're so humble because they've been around forever and, and they used 
well they're reasonably cheap anyway so you don't have to get fancy with your shrooms you can just eat your regular old button mushrooms no probs at all if you want to have variety and you want to have different um, types of mushrooms totally cool as well because when you have different types you're getting different things from them as well so different um, phytochemicals or um, a different nutrient balance in them as well but bog standard button mushrooms are great and you know what's really cool about mushrooms is that they increase those assassins the natural killer cells they get them to be more aggressive against invading pathogens like seriously how cool is that it's like a movie you couldn't even make that stuff up it's just really cool vitamin uh, vitamin d mushrooms also have vitamin d but they need a little sun bath before they were to activate the vitamin D in them. So um, put them in a little bit of sunlight before you eat them to get them um, have to have some vitamin D in there. So <laughs> mushrooms help your nat your natural killer cells, your own assassins get on get on with the job. But garlic is also a pathogen assassin. So it's antibacterial, it's antiviral, it's antifungal, like it's been revered for a very long time. Um, it's good if you can use it fresh, but you can also get um, supplements of garlic that are less stinky. So I would suggest if you are going to do the garlic thing, make everyone in the house eat the garlic. And at least with physical distancing and lockdowns and stuff at the moment, it's okay. We're not going to be um, out and breathing on workmates so much. <laughs> There's a lot Zoom can do, but it can't transmit your garlic breath, so that's good. <laughs> so you want to just crush your garlic a bit first and leave it for a few minutes before you, you can either swallow the clove whole or use it in your cooking. When you crush it or, or chop it um, and then leave it, it helps activate the, alice, the compounds in it. You want lots of allicin in it. That is what makes it a pathogen assassin. <laughs> So honey, um, beautiful soothing honey. Like you just have to think about how nice it is if you have a, you know, when you lick the spoon after you've drizzled it on your porridge or whatever and you feel it slide down your throat, how soothing and demulcent it is. So that's one of the things that makes honey awesome is that it does kind of coat your throat. So if you have a tickly cough or a dry, itchy throat, a little bit of honey off the spoon, let it um, slide down your throat is really soothing and will help reduce that cough. Um, you might have seen Manuka coffee, Manuka coffee, where's my brain at? Manuka honey. <laughs> and so Manuka honey, it describes the plants that the bees have um, taken the pollen from. And it is a native to New Zealand. And um, it was in, in the past only found in New Zealand. But however, I'm not sure if that's the case so much these days. So if you can get Manuka honey, that has more of an antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory action. But if you can't, even just raw local honey is, um, is fine and will do a super job. And like I said, you can add it to some warm water with the juice of half a lemon and a half a half a small teaspoon of honey stir it in and drink that and it'll really it'll coat all the way down and it'll just be really soothing and loving for you loving lovely for you as well in your throat so the last food that you might already have in your cupboard um, and if not it's easily and widely available these days because um which is pretty awesome really because even like probably 12 months or 18 months ago you couldn't get lots of these things around now we have have wide availability and lots of choices in them too. So probiotic and prebiotic foods. Prebiotic means it's food for the bacteria, so like your good bacteria in your gut. Um, and if you're eating a varied and um, vegetable rich diet, you have lots of prebiotic foods already in your diet. But you can use probiotics, um, probiotic rich foods like yogurt, kefir, um, kombucha, sauerkraut, um, or any other ferments like you might see kimchi around and, and various uh, things, just whatever fermented vegetable you see. Um, you can use them to help support the health of that mucous membrane um, via its action on the microbiome. So that we have microbiomes not just in our guts, but we actually have them in our sinuses, in our lungs, in your bladder, um, anywhere that you have a mucous membrane, basically, you have a microbiome. And they can help 
um, crowd out the ba the the baddies. So when you use the probiotics as well, you they can, they can help trigger your immune system to res to start responding and to get on with the job. And they can also help to soothe your immune system. So it is actually quite important which strain you choose. So if you are going to choose a particular probiotic rather than just a probiotic food, please do talk to someone that is um, qualified or um, understands that there's different strains and different species are important for different jobs in your body as well. So remember that a large part of your immune system is in and around your gut or your intestines and your, those mucous membranes. So a happy gut and a happy microbiome is going to equal a happy and strong immune system as well. Whew, nearly there. So the last tip I have for you tonight is to choose local, seasonal and organic or biodynamic if you can. Choosing local and seasonal increases the nutrient levels in your food. Nature, make sure that we get what we need. Like think about the pumpkins available in autumn and sweet potatoes are around and all those orange and yellow colours in the fruit and vegetables that we see because they're rich in beta carotene and we need lots of that vitamin A. So beta carotene is a precursor for vitamin A. So nature really provides what we need at the time that we need it. I know it's hard because you go into the shop and the supermarket and it's like the same fruit and veg all year round and it's um, pretty. there's not really a wide variety. But if you can go to a local grocer, um, a local green grocer or a market, that's a great way to get back in touch with like what's in season. You'll see um, some things that are not available in the winter time, but there's other vegetables like particularly the root veg that are more available in the winter time. Um, but you'll also notice the price difference. Like I went to a, um, a greengrocer the other day and they had cherries there. And I was like, oh, well, they look nice, yum. Like what a treat, but it's totally not cherry season. Cherry season here in Australia is late November, early December. They came, they probably came from America. So you, you could tell if you didn't know that the season for cherries here is November or December, you would know by the price because guess how much they were a kilo? You want to sit down and they were $50 a kilo. So I know cherries are a little spendy even when they are in season. You know, the cheapest you probably find them is $10 and they're upwards of that to $20, $25 a kilo. But $50 a kilo is a big hint that they're not in season right now. Um, yeah, so choosing seasonal, choosing local where you can means that they're fresher, the nutrients, particularly ones that aren't very stable like vitamin C, um, are at higher levels when they're sort of picked and travelled less distance to you. We've got some beautiful mandarins that were grown just in Gembrook, so it's like two suburbs away, um, half an hour max that they've travelled. They're absolutely divine. So in summary, tonight I've talked about your immune system your um, your little army inside of you that's helping protect you from any pathogens so any virus bacteria yeast fungi that just shouldn't be there um, the nutrients that are needed by your immune system so we've talked especially a lot about vitamin a and how important that is um, in your body but vitamin d is one that um, people are becoming more aware of so it's a little harder to get that at this time of year so you might want to think about supplementing please talk with a health professional um, before you do start um, supplementing. Oh, my head just went blank. And um, I mentioned fats and healthy fats and didn't talk too much about them, but avocado and extra virgin olive oil um, in your repertory can't go wrong there all year, all the time, um, but especially when you're sick. So those immune stimulating foods that I talked about, um, looking at for the probiotics, uh, honey, garlic, colourful veg, fruit, um, spices like ginger, turmeric, um, making sure you're hydrated with water, eating easy to digest foods like soups and broths, um, keep you hydrated but keep you nourished as well, um, and good old mushrooms and herbal teas for the wind. Um, I also used herbal tonics, so liquid herbal um, tinctures uh, for myself and my family, and I use them with my clients as well. So if you've hopped on late, you might want to go back to the start when the saliva is available um, and have a listen so you get all those details, especially about those immune cells and do Immune System 101 with me tonight. Um, 
Next week, I will be live again on Tuesday and I'm going to talk about what depletes or what suppresses your immune system and um, to as part of this series on your immune health. Um, if there's any other topics that you would like me to cover, then please send me a message or um, drop it in the comments and let me know because I'd love to cover something that's interesting to you or um, is super relevant to you. If you would like some acute short-term symptom-based naturopathic care, a little bit of TLC for your immune system or a bit of preventative care, um, then please get in touch. My acute consults are still um, available. They are via Zoom at the moment um, and good old Australia Post or you can pick up if you're local if there's any remedies, tonics or teas that you need. Um, but yes, they're always free and always available. Um, it doesn't matter if you're far away, you can still book in and use them. So you just need to go to my website and to my booking calendar and find a time that works for you on a Friday or Saturday. Um, please always let me know if you can't find anything that suits you because I can always squeeze you in or um, move my calendar around if need be. So yeah, don't forget that I'm here to help you um, understand what's going on in your body and how you can use your food and the other things in your cupboard at home to help um, feel better and uh, quicker because that's what ultimately what we all want, isn't it? Um, and until next time, thank you for joining me tonight and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.